okay, that's jailable, right? Some of this has got to be jailable. Is this not jailable? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? I'm saying it. All right, let's hear from our Zoomer correspondent on this Colleen situation. Everybody and welcome back. It's your favorite drama journalist here to cover the news that you don't want to see by your Self. So I was just working on a second channel video on this crazy like reborn dolls drama that's going on and I was so excited to make it. I've been typing up a storm on it. I was gonna put it out today, but my friend Max texted me and was like, you gotta watch this Colleen video that she just put out like an hour ago on the dot. Like it came out like just an hour ago. It's 10 minutes. It says hi and it is uh it seems like it's the apology we've been waiting for and i am surprised that it's here because i didn't think i'd be talking about it again this soon but um yeah this is a big one so i i say let's just jump into it if you haven't watched my video on colleen long story short um she has a lot of allegations of grooming in the past few years from uh, past fans of hers who are underaged and um has done a lot more in her past career that has raised a lot of questions recently and she has been on a tour for miranda sings her character or whatever but she has not been responding to any of this i never first and foremost uh outside like i i didn't really understand a lot of the og youtube right whether it be like what is it the onion guy on on Nision? That was always, like, weird to me. Uh, Shane Dawson, I didn't really get. And this lady was another one that I was just like, what the fuck? Who's watching this? Like, I don't really understand. It. She's the one who, like, puts on makeup and, like, speaks weird, right? And, like, sings and stuff, but, like, horribly. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, I don't really fucking get it. Like, uh... It's so wild that outside of like, I mean, someone in the chat just said this too, but it's weird to see like in the context of like all the other like big ass old YouTubers like PewDiePie and KSI almost clear. KSI definitely clears, but even fucking PewDiePie almost clears uh, like 90% of old YouTube. You know what I mean? At least like, yeah, he had a fucking uh, political... Uh, he had a political radicalization moment, but like, you know, he's a wife and a child and he just keeps to himself. You know what I mean? Instead of like all this other shit. Markiplier cleared all of them. Yeah, that too. So I never understood what the fuck was going on with this shit. Uh, and I think like there were allegations that she was uh, grooming children. And basically her fandom turned on her because they were like oh shit like we've been groomed uh and then she came out with a video apologizing for it anyway let's Quite keep going yet up until now so i i say let's just jump into it let's do it um if you want to keep up on the drama want to keep up on the news you can subscribe to me here down when did white start using the term clears get with the program okay made me called being a culture vulture are you new here are you new to living in the united states of america we steal everything Let's down below going. i also have a channel that i will be uploading to later today i upload about every day posted a new video yesterday you can check up some of the extra stuff going on there let's watch it i'm too excited no 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 way no, not a react Andy. Come on. I thought he was going to give us like the breakdown of, of like what she actually did. Okay. I need to see a breakdown. Okay. I need to see like an actual breakdown. Cause I want to know what she did and what the allegations were. That he has another video. The breakdown is in the previous video, bro. Okay. We'll look at the breakdown of the previous video. I'm already doing react Randall shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm already fucking react Randalling. Oh, uh, let's see. TikTok stand up. Big trouble streamers won't stop arguing by kick. Damn, his shit's popping out. His shit, dude, his shit is popping off, dude. Look at this. 
TikTok stand-up community is big trouble. Streamers won't stop talking arguing about kick. Internet obsessed with this missing submarine. Twitter just exposed the worst online creep, Dev Lemons. The idol keeps getting worse. Colin Ballinger is running out of excuses. Hey everyone, we're back. Happy Monday. Today we're gonna talk about the Colleen Ballinger controversy. Okay, I touch on our basically a okay. subreddit calling her out for her hypocrisy and bigotry and creepy behavior. Colleen is, of course, the person behind the YouTuber personality Miranda Sings, which was very popular when I was younger. Um, I personally wasn't June. a fan of hers back then or now. Okay, listen, I'm not watching H3's PowerPoint. Everything chat. going on with Colleen Ballinger right now, AKA Miranda Sings. And keep in mind with this, there is a lot going on. I'm trying to condense and make this H did a whole segment very thorough. Yeah, it's an hour and 21 minutes long, brother. That's crazy. It's consumable, so I'm going to be linking to sources down below, not only with like, uh, you know, media pieces, but also online videos. I think H3 Podcast did a great video on them. But we're talking about this because accusations online have been mounting for weeks, coming from every corner of the internet, and it seems like it's hit a boiling point. Right among the several pieces that have now been published, you had Rolling Stone publishing a massive one. So we're going to talk about that, and then some of the other stuff has been coming from social media. And the gist of this is that Colleen's being accused of bullying, abusing, and manipulating her fans, most of whom were underage via a pattern of inappropriate behavior. And if this sounds familiar, it's because this is not the first time that she's dealt with these allegations, right? Back in 2020, Adam McIntyre made a video accusing Colleen of toxic and inappropriate actions. And he's actually at the center of this latest round as well. With Adam posting several videos of the last couple of weeks outlining Colleen's indiscretions, saying that Colleen had a group chat with roughly two dozen fans, most of whom were young teenagers. And in that chat, she would ask inappropriate questions. With Rolling Stone reviewing some of those messages, which included questions about sex and if they had lost their virginity. And on Twitter, you can see even more examples of this with Adam posting a video Colleen allegedly sent of her inserting a tampon in her mouth and then asking her fans to send a video of them doing the same thing. With Adam saying she would talk to him about her sex life as well as Trisha Paytas's nudes, all while she was 30 and he was 14, 15. And in his videos, Adam said that Colleen would just generally- Yo, what the fuck? Okay, that's jailable, right? Some of this has got to be jailable. Is this not jailable? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? No, no, dude. What the fuck? Okay, 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 okay. Oh, God. Oh, gross, dude. What? I can't. Oh, oh my God. Delete YouTube. Really overshare about her personal life and then make Adam get involved, saying that he felt that she used him. This is what she used me for. She would love bomb me, make me feel like I had a friend pretend to care about me, and I would just have to do all of her dirty work for her. With all this, you had tons and tons of people speaking out against her, some saying Colleen would bully and mock her biggest fans behind their backs. Adam backing this up, saying she would do this with him. And this was a common theme where we would find someone in the fandom that was doing something bizarre, and we would it would become an inside joke where we'd make fun of them. On top of that, there were also claims about how she would turn her fans into employees only to pay them very little and exploit their labor. With one person writing that people in her circle made working on her shows a living hell. And apparently Wait. She was... Wait, she was making her fans work like what does that mean like she was <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> bro bro youtubers youtubers went from grooming to child labor dude that's fucking crazy oh Yo, she said child labor. She's doing child labor. That's crazy. Okay. That's at a certain point you gotta you gotta <laughs> you gotta sit back, take a deep breath, and go, God damn, you know? Isn't that what you do? Yeah, me. I'm I'm famously I famously uh, exploit you guys by streaming eight hours a day. That's my exploitation. I force you to watch me at gunpoint. Apparently that toxicity extended from behind the scenes to on stage as you had people resurfacing old clips where she repeatedly crossed the line during Miranda live shows. With people also describing the bit saying she brought minors on stage, exploited them. In one case, she had a child reach into her pants to grab cheese balls. There was also another one that got a ton of attention where she had a teenage fan. Wait, what? Robert Downey Jr. exploits me every time I... The Iron Man. Come on. She had a child reach into Wait. her pants to grab cheese balls. There was also another one that got a ton of attention where she had a teenage fan come on stage to do a bit about yoga. And there she stretched the fan's legs open in front of everyone. With a person actually also making a TikTok about how exploited she felt by all that. Saying she felt incredibly exposed on stage. Worried about.
Some of her fans had access to her Twitter account and put out tweets for her. One of her fans' uh, tweets actually got her canceled for homophobia when they were queer baiting, saying they were coming out as a Megan Trainer fan. Weird shit, dude. What people could see of her since her outfit. Wait, saying you're coming out as a Megan Trainer fan is queer baiting? What the fuck are Zoomers on, dude? What do you? What do you? What? Okay, that's like Hassan exploits chatters by saying go to the gym and work out. Yeah, exactly. I'm doing a lot of child exploitation by telling people to be normal uh, and, uh, you know, watching political YouTube videos. If it didn't have full coverage of her body, so she felt essentially naked on stage, sexually violated because she felt her body had been exploited for entertainment. And allegations of inappropriate behavior extending past Colleen and over to members of her team, with one fan telling Rolling Stone that Colleen's friend Corey mocked their weight at a meet and greet, with Colleen's brother Trent also being accused of complimenting a fan's look, saying things like, you would look good pregnant if you ever want children one day, as well as allegedly saying anything we talk about. Okay, that's jailable, right? It has to be, right? Like an adult saying that to a child. Am I, is there laws around this? And if there isn't, why isn't there laws around that? There's got to be, right? You can't. This discourse is level three terminally online. What the fuck? It stays between you and I. And so with all that, you had Sasha Judd, an expert on fandom, telling Rolling Stone that these allegations shed light on how much emotional power stars can have, especially within their insulated fandom, and how even if nothing is technically illegal, it can still harm a young fan. Whenever there's an opportunity to actually be in contact with the object of your fandom, that's just sort of ripe for a really unbalanced power dynamic. Because the fan is nobody to the famous person, and the famous person is absolutely everybody to the fan. And that can produce some pretty giant red flags. And while speaking to Rolling Stone, Adam echoed that issue, noting that as a young fan, he was not looking for red flags. He was too thrilled to just Bro, it's not even that they're fans. It's that they're young. Am I crazy? I feel like the fan is like, it makes it even worse. But it feels like when I look at a situation like that, I think like fandom is just like an access to an unlimited supply of children. Like that's what they're, they're utilizing uh, the, the fandom as. Like that's the, the main problem here is that they're children that you're like routinely talking to, right? That is... What the fuck? I mean, that's that's just... Isn't that illegal? I feel like that should be illegal. Am I crazy? She shouldn't be communicating with anyone under 18 on her phone. That's weird. Like, I mean, obviously, if she has, like, relatives or whatever, that's fine. <laughs> okay, maybe she shouldn't, even if it's her relatives, because uh, she should be in jail, probably, or especially her brother. Have Colleen's attention and adding, I was looking at it like this golden opportunity of trust. And I, in the moment, really didn't care if it was morally right or wrong because I was just grateful that she was talking to me and not anyone else. And as all of this has been coming out, Colleen has been losing subscribers and sponsorships with ZocDoc telling Rolling Stone it would no longer run ads on her podcast. People also waiting for more creators to chime in, Trisha Paytas in particular. And that because Colleen actually hosts a podcast with Trisha, and one person alleged that Colleen used to host viewing parties to body shame and make fun of Trisha's OnlyFans content. But also, with all of this, it does appear that Colleen still does have fans on her side. In fact, some relentlessly so because Adam said that he's actually been harassed by her fans to the point where he's actually had to file police reports over the threats of violence, doxing, and swatting that he's been receiving. And Adam telling Rolling Stone that this harassment has been soul destroyed. And so with all these allegations, you've had tons of responses with people saying things like, don't get it twisted. The way that Colleen Ballinger treated her fans is so obscenely inappropriate and absolutely not the norm for any public figure, especially one with an audience of children. If this were a traditional child's entertainer, it would be nonstop headline news. Can you imagine if an adult Disney Channel star was in group chats with under age fans using them for free labor, telling them graphic details of their sex life, publicly posting sexually charged content targeted at kids, then going on tour and making kids mimic explicit acts. Now for her part, Colleen didn't respond to the Rolling Stones request for comment there. She also didn't respond to our request for comment. And so for now, we'll have to wait to see what else comes from this. She hasn't posted to YouTube since it started blowing up, though she did perform. Okay, well, she she did post the YouTube now. So that's where we're at. Um, so chat to to uh, you guys. I ask, uh, did Philip uh, DeFranco basically cover this well, or should I go into a little bit deeper of a dive from uh, Nick is not green? Crazy, I was a fan of her as a minor over ten years ago. At least a few days ago, she was posting on social media with seemingly no criticism. Um, but now things have gotten very up here. Let's take a look at her most recent Instagram post and just see how people are currently feeling about her yeah top comment with her and her child address this situation you're making it worse justice for adam these comments are blowing my mind resorting to name calling and slurs really i would be blocking each and every one of you for commenting such gross things on a photo of a child so yeah you can tell that there's a little bit of fighting going on between people who are still with colleen 
and you know the mass amount of people who are calling her out for all of the shady things she has done in her past so let's jump into what it's all about if i miss any details comment below i respond to comments on basically every video i put out if i miss some smaller details let me know and i'll make sure to try to update the video as we go but of course there's so much coming out from so many different sides of the story that i'm going to try to cover it in a, in a way that isn't going to take me hours. So Colleen has been in controversy for a bit now, obviously, but the last time she was negatively in the public eye was just over three years ago when she put out an apology for multiple things that happened in the past on her YouTube, including some racially insensitive characters she was playing, some fat phobic jokes that she took part in, uh, an inappropriate relationship she had with a fan who was a minor, and this horrible clip of her talking about the way she treated a dog of hers when she was a child all of okay 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 that went to like 11 different directions i feel like i don't know if this is like a youtuber thing but like like fat phobia is one thing and then inappropriate relations with a child like like what are we doing how are those in the same category why is she apologizing for the same and the same it's literally like guys i'm so sorry I said the R word. I was being ableist. I'm so sorry for the harm I caused. Also, I murdered someone in 1997 and the human remains are still in the basement of my childhood home. Sorry for that too, I guess. It's like, well, one, what the fuck? What, what do you, what do you mean? That's just like, it's like one is drama, right? Kind of, uh, bro, Hassan, first, she's not actually apologizing to Lamau. You have not seen the video yet. Wait, what? All of these issues are really easy to find online, so I'm not going to touch on every problem from back then because there's countless people talking about it anyways. And these are just like, a lot of these are disturbing to look at and watch, and it's a very uncomfortable thing. But the reason why this apology was so interesting to me is because it was initially very positively received. People felt like Colleen was doing exactly what a YouTuber should do in an apology. You know, touch on everything in a blunt way that leaves no confusion about the shit you did and be confident that you're owning up to it. And your fans, a lot of the time, will buy it. It's not too hard to convert people who are already wanting to be on your side and to trick you. Yeah, uh, people said that the dog thing is like she pinched a dog so hard until the dog bit her, and then they had they had to put the dog down. ...them into thinking that you're still a good person to follow. This apology is a little bizarre, but unfortunately not rare for a lot of YouTubers who make their way through controversy. But watching it back years later, especially with all the accusations she's receiving, it seems a little bit suspicious. I don't know. Colleen makes a crystal clear point in this apology to clearly state how many years ago these things happened, showing that this was just me being young and stupid, regardless of the fact that she was a fully grown adult who was over 30 years old when a lot of this shit happened. A video has resurfaced of my sister and I from 14 years ago. People were saying, how dare I talk about racism when I said these things 14 years ago? It's a video that I filmed 12 years ago and shocked that those things were coming out of my mouth 12 years ago. Say, well, I knew better when I was that age or 14 years ago, I knew right from wrong. I'm so glad that you did. Now, this is a lot to throw at you at once. I know it's a little bit confusing and I won't dive too deep into every single controversy from years ago, but the inappropriate relationship that she mentions with a fan of hers is one facet of the story that becomes very, very interesting. Colleen in this apology starts explaining this weird story about how she would send fans like random shit in the mail, like clothes she doesn't need, uh, a bunch of trinkets and knickknacks maybe. And it resulted in this young teenage fan receiving lingerie from Colleen. The biggest issue that came from his video is that I sent a child underwear and Wow, anyone who heard this out of context and was offended, I completely understand. Please explain to me the context because this is some, I mean, if you can describe away the context of like giving a child, a 13 year old, your underwear, you could probably defend Donald Trump because he's got a court case coming up and he's dead to rights. You know what I mean? I really want to know how you can contextualize this circumstance, okay? If she can get out of this, that's some Saul Goodman shit, dude. She can get out of anything. 
because I would be too. Now, being a YouTuber is great, right? I'm walking down the street every day, a paparazzi's taking pictures of me, people are stopping me. Oh, I can't breathe. I'm such a big fan. I can't breathe. Love it. Of course, it's the best. You should not be regularly developing friendships with fans of yours especially if you're a grown adult and especially if these the kid begged it for years they said lamau nope nope that's not good that's not see see now i said contextualize this in a way that makes you seem normal that's still still not normal okay that's still abnormal you understand it was actually the same guy from earlier that she sent the underwear to, but he was even younger. Nope, still not normal anyway. Like, the lie that she is claiming does not seem to make her look good, in my opinion. She didn't wear the underwear. It was a new pair, and I'm betting that's the argument she's going to use. Doesn't matter. Still weird kids are under 18. This fan who initially came out and told their story about Colleen three years ago is Adam McIntyre, who is now a 20-year-old YouTuber who originally made a video back in 2020 called Colleen Ballinger Stop Lying, a video that now has 1.7 million views, and it's about the weird relationship that this 13-year-old fan had with Colleen and how before things- Okay, see, this makes sense. Kid was kidnapped and needed her underwear to escape. That's a good one. Okay, that's contextually maybe somewhat appropriate. The, the, the kidnappers were like, we are adults and we need Colleen Ballinger's underwear and then we'll release this kid. Saved. Okay, there you go. You did it. I don't think that's what happened though. I, and I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> but that would be the one-off instance where that makes sense where like you did a good thing by sending a child your underwear. It was literally bleeding out. She used the underwear to stop bleeding. Nope, not normal. Could use any other clothing, any other article of clothing. Go ahead. Tell me it was, she was only in her underwear. Make it even weirder. Okay. Can't do it. Got bad. He was actually hired to do work, helping her with her channel. And not only was he never paid for it, but he also has a lot of evidence showing that Colleen treated him in a way that a YouTuber shouldn't treat a child, someone who was in middle school at the time. And even worse than that, Colleen has a history of questionable messages that were sent to him and other fans when they were very underaged. And this video from Adam is seemingly the main reason why Colleen ended up making her apology video. Adam's video right now has 64,000 likes and 39,000 dislikes. Um, and Colleen's apology video looks a lot better than that. After her apology came out, fans were so accepting of the way that Colleen handled it that they went to Adam's video and did everything they could to suppress it so it wouldn't have a bad effect on Colleen's career. At the time, there were accusations of Colleen being in group chats and text messages with her young fans, where she'd talk to them about inappropriate shit that should never be sent to a fan, especially one that's 13 years old, which was the age of Adam when they began having this weird relationship with Colleen. Bro, this is literally what, like, Republicans think gay people are doing. Like, this is what Republicans think, like, teachers are doing, okay? Meanwhile, it's just like 2010 era YouTubers that were doing that, okay? And they're straight, by the way. Just, you know, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Dog, this is what Republicans are doing. True. Also true. Yeah. Oh yeah, who was a 31-year-old woman at the time. A 31-year-old woman in a group chat with uh, people who are teenagers. Now, I know there's so many extra details of the gross stuff she did, but I do want to get to the present day because it keeps going, of course. That's why I'm here today. In between 2020 and this past week, the subreddit that calls Colleen out for all these things, r slash Colleen Ballinger Snark, a very fun subreddit to be a part of, um, it grew to a pretty massive size of over 30,000 people. So sweaty. Excuse my hair. I'm I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. People were constantly posting about the way she would exploit and record her children for views and the way she interacted with fans before that apology that happened in 2020. Now, recently, Adam McIntyre came back to do a full uncensored deep dive on Colleen and the relationship he's had with her. This is a story that's still developing every single day, but Adam is posting basically every day with hours of content, refusing to let Colleen sweep all of this under the rug once again. As you see, Adam is definitely taking an approach here to really get all that there is to know about Colleen out there to actually have her held 
accountable for her actions and i think that's great i definitely recommend his channel it'll be linked below if you want to dive in even further to how uncomfortable this entire thing is but luckily adam's videos are being received in a much different light than they were three years ago when they originally told this story but i want to park there for a second because three days ago the story got even bigger when a publication made a post about this controversy on instagram and now millions of people are being exposed to this bizarre story as impact touches on here colleen who's 30 36 has a lot of fans who are now in their adulthood and they're speaking out about the ways that her and her best friend Corey DeSoto, who is also 36, uh, use their platform to reportedly groom children online. Now, a lot of these situations happen in group chats that Colleen was a part of with fans who were around 12 to 17 years old. She allegedly used the group chats to form close relationships with these kids and make them feel special. She talked and vented about her marriage, her sex life, her trauma, and she even asked these minors about their favorite sex position and their virginity. Of course, that's gross. Keep that away from me, please. There are ex fans. Everything I found out about this drama has led me into thinking, three things one is this illegal two if it's not illegal why isn't it illegal and three how do we avoid the top of the hour ad break <laughs> anyway uh here's the three minute ad break now no but like the first two things i said is actually valid like one is this illegal or isn't this illegal rather and two if it's not why isn't it illegal and uh third i guess would be how do we make it illegal Hassan's HRT dealer, thank you for the five, get the subs. Who are coming out with screenshots of these group chats that they were in with Colleen. One of these was um, someone who was 15 years old at the time who came out and talked about the way that Colleen um, treated them when they were I younger. Gotta pee. And even included posts from Colleen Again. back then that were also unacceptable for a grown woman to be posting about at the time. Here's another. There is, it feels like there are, it's easier to find colleen ballinger's posts that are acceptable than unacceptable you know what i mean it's like it's like in the rare moments was she ever acceptable it's like it, it seems like everything she has done has been unacceptable and most likely illegal i would hope in a perfect society it would be illegal um why why is she i i need to piss but i can't like leave the broadcast you know what i mean it's like I meant like, not like needle in a haystack. I mean, like it's easier to count in one finger the times that she has been acceptable than not. That's what I meant. Okay, I got an overview of what happened with Adam when they were 15. Colleen asked them for pictures, mailed them lingerie, exploited them for years of unpaid child labor. As you can see, there's a really uncomfortable screenshot here of a group chat called Colleenies Weenies with uh, presumably a bunch of underage children uh, where Adam at age 14, I think, says, my ass looks so good today, y'all. And 31 year old Colleen saying pics adam and more of these group texts are constantly coming out with adam posting a lot of them on his twitter which will also be linked below um there is a dm here that colleen sent to these kids saying tell me all the thoughts you had when you first got your periods please and thank you um example i thought i shit myself because the blood was so dark in my underwear that's normal. That's good. That's cool. There are people who are still defending Colleen who replied to this tweet right here and said, of course, period is offensive to Adam, a completely normal bodily function. 115 likes right there. You know, it's OK if you as a YouTuber go talk to a bunch of kids who are in middle school and high school and talk to them about sex positions and periods. So especially at this point in the story, I know everything has kind of exploded. We're going every which way. But Adam isn't the only one talking about this anymore. Fans of Colleen have had the courage to speak up about their stories as a result of everything going on. Here's a fan who said, I'm finally brave enough to share my experiences. I uh, supported Colleen and her family from the age of 13 to 18, and I was in group chats with Colleen and also messaged her privately on Twitter. I logged back into my old account to find so much of 
what was said. Absolutely inappropriate of her to say to minors. A whole lot of trauma dumping in the group chat to me and so much more. At the time, I was a child and also blindsided because she noticed me. The fact I look back now and feel sad that I never saw her manipulating me or saying inappropriate things, etc. And text even coming out from Colleen's brother, Trent, who has been on her channel before, who talked to minors saying stuff like, don't share a conversation with anyone. Anything we talk about stays between you and me. I'm told not to talk to people under 18. You don't look bisexual. Okay. 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 What the fuck, dude? It got worse? I mean, how does it... Just when you think, like, we're 13 minutes in, there's no way this is going to get worse. Then you add the fucking brother onto the pile, and all of a sudden... What's next? Like, did she murder one of the kids? Because I feel like that's it. That's like, you can't elevate it further. Go back, look at the dude's pick. Oh! And on her channel before, who talked to minors saying stuff like, yeah, I feel like fat phobia does not even meet like the top 10 here. Am I crazy? Like even fucking racist videos from 10 years ago don't even meet the top 10. That doesn't mean that those things are acceptable. It's just like there's so much more unacceptable shit. It's like canceling Charles Manson for being ableist. You know what I mean? Wow, really? You just don't see fat people as human? You just don't even see fat people as human? Yeah, no, that's, that's what I meant here. No, man. I think it's weirder that she's trying to fuck fat children, okay? That's weirder than making fun of them for being fat, okay? That's my thing. I don't know. I feel like my perspective on the matter is that. I think that that's weird. That person was kidding, okay? That person was joking. I saw. She asked for a kid's pictures on a, uh, of his butt in the group chat. I saw. I saw. I'm, I'm listening. Like, don't share a conversation with anyone. Anything we talk about stays between you and me. I'm told not to talk to people under 18. You don't look bisexual. How old are you? 13. All of which, of course, again, goes deeper. There are always more messages. There's always more shit to come out. But as a baseline thing... These conversations going longer than one or two messages with people who are fans of yours who are obviously not of age is inappropriate. It's wrong. It's weird. You shouldn't ever have that part of your brain that wants to do that. And yeah, by the way, this is true. Uh, as long as she didn't violate the non-aggression principle, I feel like she's the perfect libertarian YouTuber. Underage relationships, child labor, finally, truly a libertarian influencer. As long as she doesn't violate the nap, okay? And by nap, I don't mean nap time, which is something that Colleen Ballinger's victims were subjected to in an otherwise unjustifiable hierarchy. Okay? <laughs> Not only that, but someone like Colleen, who has such a big business around her YouTube channel, who has so much going on, you'd think that she'd have enough shit to do where she wouldn't have the time to, to creep on young kids. She wouldn't have the energy or, uh, I guess, urge to like go out there and form these weird relationships. It's hard to do that when you have this job. I'm so busy all the time. I don't even respond to the people who are my friends. Why would I want to start making friends with people who watch me and don't don't, don't even know anything about me. So as you've already heard, um, Colleen isn't the only person involved in this story. One of her best friends, Corey DeSoto, who is the same age as her, is also under fire for the way he interacted with fans during this time. There's actually a voice memo that Corey sent to a group chat of these fans that has a lot of people cringing over the way that he's handling accusations of grooming with kids. Hey everyone, it's Corey. I just wanted to record a voice memo because... I have like a lot to say, um, but first of all, I just want to say that like, I love all of you. Like you all honestly mean so much to me. Oh my God. Um, oh my you God. have no idea. I know that it sounds weird because I'm a full grown adult and some of you are younger. Oh my God. And blah, blah, blah. Oh but, my God. Um, like I honestly think of all of you like as my best friends. Like I don't have friends. Oh and god. And I'm a loner and I'm a loser. Like my only friend is Colleen. Oh my god. And like I 
it's so comforting to like go online and talk to you guys and and feel like loved and cared about because I love and care about all of you. Um, and I trust you. At that point, you have enough money for therapy. Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like trauma dumping on children instead of fucking going to a therapist, a professional therapist. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, don't say go out and touch grass, bro. Because there's children around, okay? He's touching the, the grass of the fucking kindergarten. No, do not touch grass. Do not touch any grass. Get in the car and immediately go to a therapist, okay? No grass in sight. No, do not be outdoors unless you are only going to your court-mandated therapy session. What the fuck? You and, like, I, like... With all my friends, I vent to you, and when I'm angry and I feel better and I feel comforted by you. Hey, why don't you have a group chat? Looks like a good idea for content creators to have one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I should definitely do that. That's what I'm thinking. Some chatter told me Hassan doesn't want to cover this. Eat shit chatter. Yeah, because I didn't know what the fuck this was about, and I thought it was some, like, random YouTuber drama. Not, like actual illegal activities and like widespread grooming conducted by a youtuber that got a fucking netflix show hoscord exists yeah if you've seen my interactions in hoscord uh you know it's far from whatever the fuck this is okay it's me mostly yelling at motherfuckers in there for being weird as fuck actually hoscord is a great example because like there is a reason there's part of the reason why i don't like you know, uh, develop deep connections with people uh, in my community is for this reason. Like, I don't want to... And plus, most of those people are significantly older than fucking Colleen Ballinger fans. But regardless, like, you made fun of a chatter's boyfriend's fit when they bought her some Legos at Target. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that was on the stream. That's different. Like, I want to place... I want a place for people that are uh, fans of mine to go and like uh, feel safe. Um, a place where like if you're trans, if you're gay, you know what I mean? If, you, if you're looking for like-minded individuals, I want you to be in a space. But I also don't want to be in that fucking space all that much because that's your space. You know what I mean? That's it. That's part of the reason why I don't fucking touch uh, Hoscord. Even though sometimes, God, I, I really want to nuke it. You know what I mean? I, I try to keep a healthy relationship with my fan base for this reason uh i already ran the top of the hour ad break so you missed that you all and i hope that i can do the same for you but like this whole thing with krista is has just escalated into something really bad oh my god now, six days ago, Corey actually fully deleted his Twitter after all of this stuff started coming out. And since then, things have only got worse. And even though Colleen just performed a live event this past weekend, her and her team refused to say anything about what's going on at the shows or online. Wait, what is it? You called me a bad person earlier when I baited you healthy. What did you say? That was a good ass bait, you fucking piece of shit. Perform on the 20th. Oh, wrong video. All right. Because the shows are just filled with a bunch of little kids. They don't know any better. They're just dumb. There's nothing going on in their heads. Now, in the past few days, Adam has made a video about Cody Tyler, who is a fan of Colleen's, that originally was a big reason why Adam was suppressed talking about their story in 2020. Now, Cody is coming out three years later and is confirming a lot of these things that Adam was talking about in 2020. Now, this whole Cody Tyler part of the controversy is a, another part you can look into. Adam's channel and the subreddit are both great for for looking at all of the stuff happening in Austin is the closest thing you have to having some sort of relationship with a fan lol true <laughs> but I mean that doesn't count because like we uh, we we met each other because we were peers <laughs> 
became a fan after, so it's different. Keeping up with the updates on it, so both of those will be linked below as well. I'm sure more and more content will come out in the coming weeks, so if we want to talk about this more and revisit this disaster of a situation, we can do that. And the more stories that come out, like the ones with Colleen, the more we have to understand our roles in the consumer creator ecosystem. It can be easy to understand that YouTube is this wild, wild west with no rules and anything can really happen and we're still learning. But as just an adult who is providing entertainment to a group of people, we have to understand that not only is that relationship in that power dynamic between a creator and their fans uh, inappropriate, but just as a general rule in everyday life, an adult human being should not be privately talking to teenagers on a group chat. And that itself, I don't find hard to uh, understand at all. I think that's a very clear rule. I can see how someone with the ego of a YouTube creator would want to have access to fans who can directly validate them and make them feel good about themselves. It's like you're a rock star and you got a bunch of groupies following you around, but instead of playing music on stage, you're like dressing up in lipstick and funny clothes and then in your free time, you go and you talk to a bunch of children, actual children. And I'm sure that this isn't even that rare of a case. There are probably a lot of creators out there who have inappropriate interactions with their fans online or in real life. Especially now more than ever, people feel connected to creators because there's people like me who talk straight into a camera as if I'm talking to a friend about something that's going on in the internet. And that's going to make people feel more connected to a figure than back then when people were just into actors and other famous people people who did things. I mean, I can say right now that with what I do on YouTube, I do attract an audience that sometimes can feel a little closer to a content creator than they should. I experienced that firsthand when I went on tour and saw the difference that, you know, YouTube commentary fans treat a creator compared to a musician or an actor. Parasocial relation or the Hasanabi broadcast where fans uh, develop an antagonistic relationship with the content creator and become indistinguishable virtually from fucking haters and uh, regularly get me canceled. Uh, fuck you guys, okay? Why can't we find a healthy middle, a healthy middle, a healthy middle? You know what I mean? If I ever see you in public, I'm going to remember this. I mean, I'll be super nice, obviously. I'm always nice. Relationships are very easy to create when you're watching someone who seems like they're not put through all of these layers of, uh, of like, authenticity or whatever, you know? It makes people feel like they can be more comfortable with you, and they don't feel like there is as much of a power structure when there always still is. People who have an audience like I do, or really any YouTubers on the platform, need to take the responsibility of keeping their fans safe. And a lot of times, not only do they fail to do that, but they actually are the ones that are making their fans unsafe. It is my responsibility as a content creator to make that boundary and make it crystal clear for people who watch me. And sometimes that isn't as clear when you're in real life and someone comes up to you and they don't know exactly what to say. I have been in a lot of awkward situations where people do treat me as if they're my friend and talk to me as if I owe them something at all. And that's not to say that I don't enjoy talking to fans. Did you say Colleen is iconic? Yeah, iconically a pedophile, it seems. <sighs> Worst place to mention this, by the way. We're just like quite literally fucking watching her groom fans and shit. But having this job definitely attracts a lot of people who are more comfortable than they should be uh, talking to someone that they watch online. And this is like a topic that is very nuanced and hard to like wrap words around, especially as I'm improv it towards the camera. But I do think that this situation in particular is a big wake up call for creators and viewers of creators to understand where they are in that ecosystem. Of course, as consumers of content, it is a fan's responsibility to be respectful. Okay, so now that we watched all this, let's take a look at what her apology video was like because goddamn, from what I understand, it is one of the worst. 